Hi everyone, I'm going to show you how to make a gingerbread um, dough. It's a really versatile recipe and it's perfect for making uh, gingerbread houses and cookies. Now I'm not reading any um, comments today um, because I just feel it kind of interferes with what I'm up to. So if anybody is watching, I'm not too sure if I've got any live viewers, I'm going to ask you just to do a couple of thumbs up if you can see what I'm doing. So if you're watching this, can I just get you to do a couple of um, smiley faces so that I can know that you're hearing me and I'm not on mute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a few beautiful um, ingredients first of all. So we're going to run through what I've actually got on display. So can everyone hear me? Um, I've got a smiley face from Rosanna. Rosanna, can you hear me? Can you just give me another smiley face or a thumbs up, Rosanna? I'm not going to be answering comments or anything today in this uh, live, book, live, live Facebook feed. But um, Rosanna, you're one of my first. Can I just get you to do a, a thumbs up or a smile? Thank you, Rosanna. Wonderful. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to show you how to make a really delicious um, gingerbread house recipe. And there's some key ingredients that we're going to need to make this. Now, at the end of this tutorial, and warning, it probably will go on for at least 40 minutes, um, there'll be a recipe for you to have. I'm also going to show you a link where you can get the templates to download, and it's going to have my recipes with all my cake decorating instructions as well. So the first thing that we're going to need for this lovely recipe is we're going to need some butter. And I'm going to use 250 grams of butter, but I will have my butter in um, ounces as well as grams. I've also got some really rich, beautiful, dark brown sugar. Now, this isn't demerara sugar. It's a really nice, dark molasses sugar, and it's really beautiful and very aromatic. Um, the other thing that I'm also going to use, um, I've got some um, self-raising flour in the bowl, and I'm going to sift that in a minute. And... I've got a couple of eggs. Now I'm going to use some 50 gram eggs and these have been kept out at room temperature. So basically I'm going to um, make sure these are at room temperature and they're not cold. Okay. Now I've also got some beautiful black treacle. I'm going to show you what the container looks like. So let me just grab that. Now this is I call it black treacle, but here in Australia they call it treacle. Um, it's not golden syrup because it's really rich and very dark. And if you're in England or somewhere cold, you might find that this sets. So the best thing I suggest you do is run it under a warm tap and it will loosen it up. You can actually take the lid off and then just warm it slightly on 50% in the microwave and it will be a little bit more looser. But here in Australia, it's uh, really loose, so you don't need to warm it up, okay? Now the other thing is I'm going to use some spices. Now there's all different types of spices, but what I'm going to use is I'm going to use some ground ginger and I'm going to use some cloves, okay? Now different recipes show different um, spices or seasonings, um, but for my recipe I'm going to use ground ginger and ground cloves. And what I like to do is in the recipe you'll see I've measured everything out. Because often when I'm making recipes, I sometimes make something and go, oh, did I add that to it? So before I begin any baking, uh, before I start the, the actual process, I measure everything out and I weigh it so I can't make any mistakes. Now, there's a couple of more things I'm going to need to add. I'm going to need a couple of teaspoons, a fork, and then also a mixing dish. Now. This is a lovely clear glass dish and when I crack my eggs in it, I like to be able to see any shells that are on it so I can fish them out and not add them to it, okay? So, there's two ways of making this recipe. We can mix it up and do it a rubbing in method and do it in a big mixing bowl. And I suggest that if you've got children or grandkids and you want to get them involved, that is the best way to get them involved by mixing it all into a bowl, okay, and rubbing in method. But I'm going to use my bench top mixer in a minute and I'm going to show you how I mix it all together. So the key ingredients are uh, your butter and this is just ordinary salted butter, it's not unsalted. And I've chopped it up so that it's at room temperature. If you find that your butter is really, really cold and you want to warm it up quickly, I suggest you um, chop it up and then once you've chopped it up, 
you can just get a, a plastic bowl and then turn it upside down and cover it. And after about 15 minutes, it will soften up, okay? But what we don't want to do, we don't want to force it to become soft. We don't want to pop it in the microwave. Otherwise, what happens, it can clarify, it can split. So let the butter, you know, in, in Australia, it, it warms up really quickly. In England, it'd be cold now because it's December, okay? Now, the other thing is I've got some self-raising flour that I've measured already, okay? And then what I want to do is I really want to just sift it. So I'm going to get my big bowl. I'm going to just rise, raise the camera up just a little bit more so you can see what I'm up to, okay? And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a sift. Now, this is a really big, lovely mixing bowl. And I'm going to place my sift on, on there. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pop all my flour. I'm going to divide it probably into about four batches. Now, when I sift, when I sift my, icing, my flour or icing sugar, I just keep my hand still and I just tap it. And I keep that bowl sieve really close to the bowl, okay? So whenever I use flour, doesn't matter if I'm making a bechamel sauce or souffles or whatever I'm using flour, I always like to sift it because I find that sometimes there could be extras in there, okay? And I don't want any lumps or bumps in there. So I'm going to sift that flour, okay? Now, in America, I'm not too sure, I think you call this all-purpose flour, and then you add baking powder. Um, but this is self-raising flour, okay? Now, if you ever open up plain flour, or you open up self-raising flour, and then you measure it, and then you, you don't know which, which is which, the easiest way to test your flour is to get a cup of water and put a teaspoon of flour into your water, and if it starts to bubble, you know that that is self-raising flour because it's the baking powder activated, okay? And you may go, well, how do you know that, Jackie? Well, it's because I've messed this up a couple of times and opened up bags of flour and then I can't remember which one's gone into a jar, okay? So I've sifted my, my flour and then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my spices, okay? And I'm just going to use a spoon and then pop those all in, okay? Now at this point, if I wanted to, I'm gonna add my sugar next, but if I wanted to, I could do a rubbing in method, but I'm gonna use my machine, okay? So make sure your flour is nicely mixed, okay? And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring my mixing bowl and pop all of that flour into there but what i'm going to do i'm going to take a couple of spoonfuls of flour back out okay now you might find if you're working in a cool climate you might find that when you make this recipe um you may not need to add the extra flour that i've just took out but if you're a hot in a hot country like we are here in australia or singapore somewhere warm we're going to use all that flour okay but what i've done is i've probably taken out about three tablespoons of the flour mixture okay so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to add my brown sugar to the mixing now, sometimes with, dark, with our dark brown sugar, sometimes you might find that the brown sugar has clumped because it's got very wet and damp and it's clumped together, okay? So what I recommend you do, and you either bash the bag so it loosens itself up, or you just um, break it up a little bit. But often it's because it's got damp that it's happened, okay? Now, if you notice, if you've watched any of my other Facebook videos or gone on my website, you'll notice I use all these trays because what I like to do is dump everything on the tray and keep everything tidy. So at the end, when I tidy up, it's all done, okay? So, the next thing is I'm going to bring in my mixer. Now, I'm going to use um, my KitchenAid. You could, if you wanted to, use a hand mixer for this, but realistically, you kind of want a bench mixer to do this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my blade mixer, okay? I, I always call this my, my spade mixer, sorry. I always call this my K-beater, because I grew up, I got um, passed down a few generations of Burgundy Kenwood machine, which was wonderful, okay? But I've got me, me, um, my mixer. 
So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to pop my mixer into there. I'm going to bring you a little bit closer so you can see what I'm up to. Okay. And then I'm going to attach my mixer to the machine. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slowly put that on a slow turn. And what it's going to do, it's going to mix my, my brown sugar in with my, my flour. Okay. And then once I've done that, basically I've just got a nice mixture of my sugar and my flour together. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to crack my eggs. Now, when I crack my eggs, I always like to pop them into a, a glass dish. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to crack and pull. And I'm going to check to see if there's any shell. Because if there's any shell, I need to take it out. Okay. So I'm just going to whip that up and just give it a, a light mix. It doesn't need to be like a souffle. Okay. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop that back into that container and I'm going to crack my second egg. Now I always crack my eggs separately and I never ever mix them and crack them all in one big bowl. Years ago when I was a pastry chef I used to make a Genoise sponge and it, the recipe was 90 eggs and three pounds of caster sugar and the 80th egg that I cracked into my bowl was off. It was disgusting. It, it was a it was the worst smell I'd ever smell up until the point of changing nappies with my son and that was probably the worst thing I've ever smelled. But we do not want to add a, a, a smelly old egg in our mixture. So I always crack my eggs separately. And these little glass dishes, you can buy them in most cookware stores, okay? And what I like about them is that they are really just small and neat and handy, okay? Now, I've also got my, my, my dark treacle measured, and as I said earlier, if you find that you're in a cold country, you can warm this under a hot tap. You can run a warm tap, or you can pop it into a jug of warm water, and that will loosen it. Now, here in Australia, it doesn't need it, because it's warm all the time, okay? So, what I've got in my bowl is, I've got my beautiful um, flour, I've got my, my, my spices, and I've put my dark brown sugar in, okay? And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add my chopped butter. So I'm going to just move this around a little bit. And I'm going to switch this on. And I'm going to stop. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a couple of pieces of butter at a time. Now, if we were doing this in, this in a bowl, we'd be calling it rubbing in methods. We'd be rubbing it with the tips of our fingers and working it in. Okay. So I'm just going to drop a couple of pieces at a time. I will ask some questions at the end, so if you've got any questions for me, I will answer them. But I'm not answering questions as we go, okay? So again, a small amount. I'm just going to bring the arm out a little bit more. So you can see into there. I was going to bribe my son to film tonight, but he's teaching and uh, he's got loads of marking to do last week of school, so we'll let him off. Okay. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just working the butter in so I've got like a nice breadcrumb, okay? So this isn't a creaming method. Now when I make my vanilla cookies, I actually cream my butter and sugar and I add the flour, vanilla and the eggs. But this is a dry rubbing in method, okay? Now... I also want to just explain to you a couple of tools that I kind of prefer over others. Now, these are silicon uh, spatulas, okay? Now, the pink one is an all-in-one, so it's got no handle separate, it's got no joints or anything. Um, 
This again is a silicone one, it's a two part one. You can pull it out, you can wash it, you can clean it. Now you might find that sometimes when you use these, what happens is it starts to pull out ever so easy. Now I'm gonna show you some masking tape in a minute, but I just wanna to explain to you some, to something. Many of my students go, oh, they're no good. They, they start to pull out all the time. Before you want to use it, just for one time only, just put a little bit of masking tape around it, if you've got any, and then push it back in. And now that's really nice and tight. Now when you come to washing it up, you just pull it back out. You'll take the paper off and then you'll wash it separately, okay? But if you find that with the two part silicon uh, scrapers they pull apart too easy once you've used them a couple times because they've sort of shrunk when they've when they've gotten gone in the wash okay the other type i don't overly prefer is the wooden and the spatula because i find that eventually this starts to go moldy goes all wet and moldy and even if i pull them apart and dry them it starts to go moldy so out of them all i love these these are fine um you get them in most cookware shops most supermarkets but I really love these. Now, you may go, where did you buy them? Hastings, uh, but not in England, but in New Zealand. Um, last year I went uh, Christmas shopping, and I actually went Christmas shopping for a few gifts for myself, but don't tell my family, okay? So, what I've got now is, I'm gonna try and bring the camera in a bit, so you can see. Can you see into my mixture? And I've got a, like a breadcrumb mix, okay? And what I'm going to do, I'm gonna just actually I'm going to adjust this camera and if I lift this mixture up, it's like breadcrumbs, okay? It's almost like pastry, okay? And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get all that butter worked in. So with my spatula now, do not waste this butter. Get it all added in. And what I tend to do is I tend to turn the machine off, okay? Now if you're doing this with your children or your grandkids or you're doing it in the play group, Always, always switch the machine off because the last thing you want to do is catch a utensil in the machine as it's mixing. So just switch it off and work, work, work your way slowly, okay? Let me straighten this up a bit, okay? Now, as I said earlier, if you wanted to, we could, and I have washed my hands, by the way, we could just do a rubbing in method. But can you see, this is just like pastry, okay? It smells delicious, by the way, okay? Now, what I'm going to do next, and really I don't kind of, doesn't matter to me which I, which I do, but I'm going to add my eggs first, okay? And I'm going to do about half my eggs at a time. And I'm going to switch it back on. And then I'm going to switch it back off, okay? And I'm going to add the remaining of those two eggs. Now, these are 50 gram eggs that I'm using. So pretty much this is 100 grams in weight. And if you've got super duper huge eggs, you're gonna to need to crack them and weigh them. And you might find that you've got 80 gram eggs, so you only actually use one and a half. What I would suggest you do is crack one egg, weigh it, and then if the other egg is weighing 60 grams, then you're gonna just cut your yolk and then your white and then divide it, okay? So I'm just gonna mix that up. And then before I get too excited, I'm gonna add my treacle, okay? Now this is just beautiful, okay? So I, there's no, there's what I love about this recipe, and I've been making this recipe since my son was five, and he's 24 now, so a few years now, but there's no melting. You know, some recipes tell you to melt all the ingredients and then add it to, we're not melting anything, we're, 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 we're making it into crumbs, okay? Now, what I'm trying to do also is I'm trying to pull this black treacle in the center of the bowl, not on the sides, okay? And I'm gonna just work this dough round, okay? And what we wanna do, we wanna mix it so it forms a nice dough. And it's starting to come together. It's smelling like Christmas already, okay? Now I actually have used this recipe to make ginger tarts and then I've made like a lemon curd filling. So I've actually made this and rolled it out and then put it in um, uh, baking cup trays and baked it blind. Um, so I've lined it with some baking paper and then just use lentils or if you've got the ceramic beads, they're awesome or you can use dried rice. But this is a really nice dessert 
pastry as well. Okay, now I'm going to bring the camera a little bit closer so you can have a look. And it's almost like a beautiful dough. Okay, so I'm going to just... Now, if it's still a bit sticky, I might add those few spoons of flour that I took out, okay? But it's looking... I was going to say naughty word then. I was going to say pucker, but I'll get into trouble for saying Jamie's saying, okay? So now I've got a really nice dough, but I've still got a little smidgen of my black treacle. So what I want to do, I want to just crumb down all that beautiful yumminess, okay? I'm going to scrape down the sides, but my sides aren't sticky because I've put that beautiful black treacle in the center of the bowl, okay? But I wanna just get this last bit out, okay? Now I've also um, made my version of Bailey's chocolate cheesecake, okay? And a couple of times I've done these as individual tarts and I've made my beautiful Bailey's chocolate mixture and put them in there. So, um, that's another beautiful recipe. Okay, so I'm mixing the mix. It's still in the slow motion. And now, I've really got a nice, beautiful dough mixture. Now, it feels a little bit wet, okay? So what, it, it, at the moment, really, it's, it's a little bit wet. I want it to be like, you know, it's gotta be moldable, but it's a little bit too tacky, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna clean up my scraper. And what I want to do is I want to just bring in a couple of more spoonfuls of that flour. Do you remember I reserved that at the beginning? Because we are in a beautiful hot country, I'm gonna add the last few, a couple of teaspoons, okay? So let's just do that, okay? But if you're working with kids, get them involved, okay? You can't really get them involved that much around a mixing machine, but you can certainly get them involved in a mixing bowl and then mixing it all up, okay? So I'm just gonna add the last. But if you're in a really cold country, like England, you'll find that this won't need those last spoonfuls, okay? Now these, this, this actual dough is really, really beautiful. If you wanted to, you could add chopped pecans to this and make a beautiful gingerbread pecan biscuit, you know? But because we're making a gingerbread house, I kind of want it smooth, you know? So, so just a couple of more minutes. And now, I've got a beautiful dough mixture, okay? And it smells really yummy. Now, I'm just gonna do a dry wipe. So I'm just gonna wipe and do a dry wipe, okay. Now, when I make my cookie dough, I don't normally rest it. And you might go, wow, you don't rest your cookie dough. Not my cookie dough. Now for my gingerbread dough, I do. And I rest it for 20 minutes thereabouts. But this does need to rest because of the gluten. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to divide it between a couple of batches. So I'm going to get a piece of gripper mat and a flexi chopping board, okay? And I'm going to take the dough out of the pan. And I want to sort of evenly, I always feel, feel like it's gonna be a snow, snowball fight. But I'm just going to mix it into my hands and I'm going to divide it into three even sized pieces. Now, 
With my last piece, what I like to do is I like to use this and I pretend it's like a dishcloth and I want to wipe all this yummy mixture back out. So I'm going to treat my ball like a dishcloth and I'm going to wipe and get all that yumminess out of the bowl. Now, if you've still got a little bit left, get your spatula and scrape all that yumminess out of your bowl. Now, with the balls, let's divide them more evenly because what we want to do, we want to, we're going to chill them for about 20 minutes, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to lightly pat them down. And you don't need, you don't need to, to measure this, okay? And then I'm going to use some cling film. Now I have a habit of calling it Glad Wrap because that's the brand normally and um but i so what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna wrap it once and tear off my glad wrap okay and then i'm going to rest it in the fridge for 20 minutes now after it's rested you've got two options what you can do with it okay the first option is you're going to roll it out and you're going to make your gingerbread house and i'm going to show you how to do that in a minute the second thing is, once it's had 20 minutes of resting thereabouts, you can then simply pop them into a Ziploc bag and then pop them into the freezer so that you've got the dough ready to make for your gingerbread house because you may not want to make your gingerbread house now. And this is why I'm doing the video now because if you wanted to, you can make your gingerbread dough. Now notice I've got lots of little bits on my... On my um, <laughs> chopping board my flexi chopping board and what I'm going to get you to do is just pick up all those little bits don't waste them I had a Scottish uh, granddad and an Irish granddad so between them they made me become quite thrifty okay so let's just wrap those up okay and then I'm going to pop these in the fridge for 20 minutes okay now, when you put these in the fridge, make sure there's nothing smelly in the fridge. And what that means is onion, garlic, strong salami, anything that's really pu pungent in smell. I was going to say pongy then. Anything that's pungent in smell, you don't want to put it in the fridge that can, and then it can absorb those smells. So pop them in the fridge for at least 20 minutes. Okay, so by letting it chill, what it's going to do, it's going to allow us to roll out that cookie dough so much easier. Um, if we try and roll it out now, it's going to be kind of, you know, slightly, slightly, slightly tacky and slightly sticky. Now, I want to show you a few little templates that I've made and I've created. Now, at the end of this video, there will be the recipe to make this uh, gingerbread dough. But what I've done is, on my website, I've created a downloadable PDF. The cost is $5, and what it does, it has all our recipes to make the gingerbread house. It has the step-by-step -step instructions on how to build it. And not tomorrow, but maybe uh, on Wednesday, I'm gonna do a live Facebook feed. I'm gonna show you how to put your gingerbread house together. Um, but on the PDF, there's a recipe that I'm showing you today, and it's got the recipe step-by-step -step instructions. It's also got the recipe on how to make raw icing, and then I'm going to show you how to make raw icing. Not in this tutorial, but another one in a couple of days' time. But the first thing that's really great is there's a downloadable PDF printable template guide. I want to show you what that looks like. So, in the printable downloadable file, I've given you a set of three templates. They are actually on two A4 sheets. And what you can do, you can print them off, and then what I've done is I've laminated them, okay? Because what's great, you can reuse these time and time again. In the tutorial, there's actually a step-by-step -step recipe on how to make the gingerbread house. 
and I've got given you the step-by-step -step guides but I'm going to do a live Facebook video so you can follow what I do but you'll actually have a print off with all the step-by-step -step guides on how to make the gingerbread house I'm also going to do a live Facebook raw icing um, and I'm going to make some raw icing I created a bit of controversy I think by doing the video on um, piping with toothpaste but really, my only purpose for that was to just to show you that you can practice without making raw icing. But there were a few uh, comments saying, you know, toothpaste is too expensive where they live. Well, here in Australia, it's cheap. You know, in England, they've got the dollar shops. So you can buy do a pound, pound shops, you know. But anyway, I hope there hasn't been too many raucous uh, riots happening in the Cape world. But it was purely just to show you how to pipe and to practice. At college, we used to use instant mashed potato to pipe buttercream swirls and pipe basket weave and all sorts. We used mashed potato. We didn't eat it, but it was just a practice because the mashed potato was cheaper to produce than buttercream. And also our hot hands wouldn't melt it. So, you know. Now, in the templates, you can laminate the, the paper templates. And what I recommend, you can print it off on a bit of card, but you can also uh, print it off on paper. And then, what, what I suggest you do is laminate it, and then what you're going to do, you're just gonna cut round each template to begin with. And you're gonna cut it a little bit bigger than the edge. And then what you're going to do with a pair of sharp scissors, you're actually going to then um, cut. The perimeter it has to be the same. Now, when you make this gingerbread house, if you want to make him larger or her larger, or it larger, you can do that. You just simply increase the width of the templates. So what that means is when you get the print out, you can just get a, you can cut the shapes out and then you can draw on another piece of card and give it a centimeter diameter. So you go each, each template is a centimeter bigger. So this side will be bigger, this side will be bigger. It all has to be the same, otherwise they won't, they won't fit. So on this cookie dough here, I'm, got two side templates okay and what I'm going to show you in a minute I'm going to show you how to make just ordinary Christmas tree cookies you know and it's just a beautiful beautiful recipe you know you don't even need to you know you could cut out circles if you wanted to you know but the purpose of this um, Facebook is to show you how I make the dough and then also how I make the gingerbread okay and I'm going to show you how to make stained glass windows as well okay so stick by me if you want to leave comments you're very much fine to leave comments but i'm not responding to them okay and i will look at them at the end and i will go back maybe tonight who knows or a little bit later but i will go back in and check them and 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 answer them as i can and i will give this recipe out at the end but if you want to buy the PDF, it's $5 and you can pay by PayPal, you can purchase it online. Um, but if you want to get all the templates and then the step-by-step -step guide as well. But as I said, I will be showing you how to do it on Facebook. So what I've done now is I've, lam I've cut them all out. So can you see, I've now got them laminated. And what's awesome is that if they get sticky or yucky, you can just simply wipe them and wash them, okay? So having all your templates laminated is awesome. Now my gingerbread house isn't huge, but it's big because what I do also is I make little gingerbread trees to go with it, okay? And um, th these are lovely as well, you know? So um, if you have any questions to ask, please ask away, but bear in mind, I'm not gonna answer straight away because I'm not looking at the questions. So I'm gonna need to have two ends for my gingerbread house. I'm gonna have to have two beautiful sides to my gingerbread house and I'm going to have to have two roof panels on my gingerbread house. Now, there's a little bit of preparation I'm going to show you because so far our cookie dough has had about five minutes in the fridge and I want it to be really cold, so 20 minutes. So what I want to do next, I want to show you how to make some candies to go into the windows of the gingerbread house because the gingerbread house, I'm going to do two cutout windows per side. You can go crazy and do loads and loads of cutout windows but I actually keep the cutout and I use the cutouts from the windows. I use them as cookies, but I use them also to make a chimney. And either tomorrow or Wednesday, I'm gonna do a live Facebook feed and you'll see how I assemble it all, okay? So, 
I'm going to show you a few little bits and bobs what you need. Now, it sounds terrible, but I've got a hammer, okay? You may go, why has Jackie got a hammer? I've also got some candy sweets and I've got lots of candy sweets. So you're going to need some hard boiled candies. Now you can use isomalt nibs. But bearing in mind, if you use isomol, it's a laxative. So when you eat it, you'll be going to that toilet a little bit quicker than normal, okay? So I recommend the boiled sweets that you get in the sweet shop, okay? Now, the beautiful bag that I've got, we've had terrible rain today. It was black at 10 this morning. I don't know what's going on with our weather. Um, these have all gone tacky and sticky. So what I've got here is I've got some beautiful humbugs, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my humbugs and maybe this is something I should have prepared earlier and I'm going to open up the humbugs and you can use candy canes if you want to. Um, let me just move that up a bit. You can use uh, candy canes if you want to. There's, there's loads and loads of different types of uh, confectionery. Um, what I also am going to use, you can use a Ziploc bag and put all your sweets in here, okay? So you might find that if you go out and buy candy canes, you might find that some of them are discounted because they're all smashed. That's fine, you can use these, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them in a the bag and I'm gonna bash them, okay? So any, um, you don't need therapy, you can just do this with your candies and your sweets, okay? So I'm just gonna cut them. And you can do your sweets or candies or lollies, as they call them here in Australia. You can do your windows any colour to make your stained glass, you know. My plan was my orange and red, um, orange and yellow, to make it like it's glowing. Uh, not on fire, a gingerbread house, but, you know, glowing. But what you can do, you can just get all your candies, and you're going to need enough for about four windows. So realistically, I would say five of these per window. And it depends on, on, on what you're, um, you're going to make, okay? So if you've already got candy canes from last year and they're still in date, I think I've got about 300 in, in my back storage room. And every year I find them after, the, after Christmas is gone. It's like, ah, oh, I knew I had them, okay? And then I'm going to show you a really simple technique for rolling out your cookie dough so that your cookie dough is beautiful and even. Okay, we've got 10 in there. Where's, where's my family assistants when I need them? So, who have we got viewing? Hi, Jackie, I accepted. Kerry Mayers. Ah, oh, well done, Kerry. Excellent news. I presume that's on the uh, Facebook. Yeah, we won't talk about other stuff. Um, but Kerry's uh, part of the cake association that I belong to. So we've got a few things happening. Oh, exciting things happening, actually. But mum's the word. Okay. So we've got beautiful candies happening in the bag. So... They have to be a, a candy, they can't be chocolate coated, they've got to be a hard boiled candy because they are going to melt inside the gingerbread in the windows, okay? And it'll be awesome, okay? So these are going to melt like a pink and white splodge, okay? But hey, they obviously haven't been to Ikea and checked out the styling. Okay, so I think I'm done. Now, when we bash the bag, We've got to do it with some love, okay? And what I tend to do is I don't seal the bag completely up, otherwise the pressure will just explode it. And then what I normally do is I hide it in a tea towel. So let me show you how I do this, okay? Now last year, my lovely student Debbie and I, we went crazy and um, we were bashing. And then our husband, my husband came in midway, a bit worried what we were up to. So what I normally do is I just put them in the bag, Okay, and then I don't zip them up, I just fold it over, okay, otherwise it splits and goes everywhere. I know this because I've done it, okay. Now, there's a couple of options. You can use your wooden rolling pin. Do not use your plastic uh, poly 
plastic rolling pin because if you do that you'll dent it okay and then you can also use a hammer but I am going to use and guess what not one's broken so I'm gonna be naughty I'm gonna probably get my husband to Right, they're starting to go. Can you see? Beautiful. I'm obviously too gentle. There we go. Can you see? We've got nice, beautiful crumbs happening. Okay. So I'm going to do a few of this. This is therapy. I'm not thinking of anyone in particular. <laughs> but can you see they're all breaking up beautiful? Okay, so a few more. Now, you can, if you want to, Oh, one day I'm going to get used to this. You can, if you want to, put it in a food processor, but it makes a really rowdy noise. So, by just smacking or... I never thought I'd be using a camera... Uh, sorry, a, a hammer on live Facebook. And I bet you I'm smiling as I do this. Okay, right, it's all done. All done, but one, okay. So, what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna show you the tools that I'm going to need to roll out my beautiful dough, and I'm gonna show you the trays that I use, and I'm gonna show you a few little tricks that will help you roll out your cookie dough, beautiful and even. And why I say they're gonna be beautiful and even is because what's also beneficial, they will all cook at the same time. Now, there might be family members that may be disgruntled with this because they will not have any off cuts or over ones that are not cooked properly because they'll all cook beautiful, but hey. Um, so let me show you how to prepare your cake tins or your, your, um, well, your cake uh, trays, as I call them. So let me show you how to do that. And I'm, and I'm just gonna move those out of the way. Okay, so prep-wise, when I, when I make my cookie dough, there's a couple of things that I do that I'm going to need. Now, I've got my baking, baking paper, paper, and I've also got my templates. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just fold up my tea towel and I'm going to place that alongside my rolling out. I'm going to set it up to my right and I'm going to move this camera around a little bit more. Okay. And I'm going to park my rolling pin on the right hand side. And what that's going to do is going to stop my uh, rolling pin from rolling. Okay. Now, I'm going to use some spacers. And you may not know what spacers are. They are acrylic spacers that I've got my husband to cut out from sheets. And what he's done is they are three mil deep sheets and he's cut them into strips for me. Now, years ago, I used to use um, wood that would go around architrave for doors. We were renovating our house back in the UK and we had some strips of wood. And I said to Matt, can I have that? And he goes, what for? And I went, I want to use it to roll out when I roll out my cookie dough. And he goes, how can you roll out with you know bits of wood? I went, no, 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 I'm going to use them as spacers going to put my rolling pin on top and roll them because at college we learned to use our cake trays and turn them upside down so we use our baking sheets put them either side and then roll our rolling pin okay now about 10 years ago uh, a, a, another brand of cake decorating tools bought out a range with the rings on them so they got like the rubber rings on top and then they have different gauges they are great, but the downside is when you want to start rolling out your bigger pieces of fondant, they create tram line marks, okay? 
Now, when I roll out the cookie dough, if I roll out between my spaces at three mil thick, it's not, it, they're gonna be too thin. They're gonna be really, really thin and fragile and the gingerbread house will not have any structure, okay? So what I've done is I've got three spaces and what I've done is I've put three together and then I've used some masking tape. Now, if you wanted to, you could use um, nursing tape, so tape that we would go on a bandage. And what I do is I get one, two, and I get a third. So here I've got two already taped together. And I'm gonna tape a third one on there. And I just wrap it round, okay? And I just wrap it round the other end, okay? So that when I roll out my cookie dough, my cookie dough is gonna be nine mils thick. Now, if you don't have these, there's a few other things you can do. You can get rulers and you can tape rulers together. And then what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna show you in a minute just using a couple of cake boards either side of your running pin because these two cake boards are the same depth as the spacers. So you can roll out your cookie dough, but I'm gonna put them either side. I'm gonna put another set there. You'll see what I mean in a minute, okay? So, I've got my templates ready, they're here. Now what other tools do I need? Well, the first important tool for, for cookies, realistically, is a bench scraper. And I use a bench scraper all the time to lift up my cookie dough, okay? And you might go, well, I thought a bench scraper is to clean your bench or cut your fondant, but I actually use it to help scoop and then lift up my cookies, okay? Now, if I am making cookies individually, and I'll show you in a minute when I roll up my cookie dough, but if I cut out my cookies out the cookie dough, so I cut, cut the cookie dough now, I use that to scoop it up and lift it and then move it onto my board on my tray to bake. I don't cut my cookies out like that and then lift them up. I, I cut them out, I keep them in the, in the cutter, and I scoop it out and put it on there. Okay. So, the next thing I want to show you is our baking trays. Now I have had these specially made and they're an aluminium baking tray that I've had made. Now you can you can use the domestic kitchen trays okay but the downside of these because they have a lip on them they actually don't allow the cooking to be more even and often what can happen is you'll actually have sometimes a lighter edge and more darker and it reflects the heat okay now I have actually seen people use them this way around and that is a solution as well so that you don't have that lip of 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 um, heat restriction because that actual lip there stops that heat from coming into it more it sort of comes over and then down okay so I'm not saying you've all got to go and buy these but these are aluminium trays or sheets that I had made and I had them made specially for my size oven now, what I'm gonna do is, I've got some butter left in that container. You might go, Jack, there's none in there. But there is, there's a tiny, tiny little bit in there. But what I'm also gonna do, I'm gonna get my canola oil spray. I bet you I've left it down, be down, but let me go and see what I've got in here. So yeah, I've left, my, I've left my canola spray down in the house, but that's fine, okay? So what I'm gonna do first of all, I'm going to get a sheet of baking paper and I'm going to measure the length that I need. So I'm gonna measure the actual, she the actual sheet that I'm using and I'm going to make a fold. And then using a small paring knife, I'm gonna start at the bottom and I'm gonna slowly bring the knife away from me, okay? So I'm gonna cut that away from me. Now, can you see naturally the paper curls where it's come off the roll, okay? And you can see if I hold it up, it's curling upwards. So I want you to turn it round so it faces downwards, okay? And then getting a smidgen of your butter, I want you just to do a few little dots on your baking tray, okay? And let that natural curl, can you see that natural curl on that sheet? Let that just lay down and sit on that, okay? And that's my baking sheet prepped. Now I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make two of these, or do two of these. 
so if you wanted to you can turn that sheet upside down and bake on there but you need to be careful when you remove them out the oven okay so i'm just going to turn this going to fold it over make a nice sharp fold on that and then i use a small paring knife with the blade going outwards not the blade coming in the blade outwards okay i lay it flat and then just very gently cut it again as it curls in see the paper curls in a few little dots of butter beautiful okay turn it over it's perfect okay I'm gonna do one more because I have a feeling I better make some for my son's school kids so I'm gonna make some little trees okay so this is glad bake baking paper um, it's not grease proof paper, okay, so it's a baking paper. Uh, grease proof paper can sometimes burn. Um, we, we call it uh, parchment paper as well, okay. So can you see when I hold that, that curls up, so I need to turn it around the other way, okay. And I'm going to lay that perfectly on here. Beautiful. Okay, now, I think I'm probably still a little bit ahead of myself, but... I'm just going to prep and show you how I roll out my cookie dough. So I've got my templates here, and then what I've also got is I've got some I've got some square cutters, and I'm going to use them to cut out some windows on there. Um, I've also got um, a Christmas tree cutter because what I want to do is I want to make some Christmas trees to go on on the cake board. Okay, so. Um, I'm going to use my flexi uh, chopping board and then what I'm going to do I'm going to use another flexi chopping board and I'm going to use that to scoop my cookie dough okay now you may ask where do you buy these from but you can buy these in most cookware shop shops or you can buy them in like the cheaper shops like the dollar shops or the pound shops in the cookware section or in like where the um, serviettes and plates are here in Australia, you can buy two for like $3. They're really cheap. And I also um, use them for other things as well. Okay. So I'm going to ask a few little questions. If anyone's got any, um, any, any questions. We've got 75 live Facebook view as well. That's great. Um, I'm, my apologies that I've run a little bit late. Um, I, again, rain deliveries and everything else so what i'm going to do next i'm going to get my cookie dough and i'm going to show you how to roll roll it out now my cookie dough is it's nice and cold now it's not rock hard to feel, it's still a little bit soft, but it's nice, it's nice and chilled, okay? So I'm going to bring the camera down now, and I'm going to show you how I roll out my cookie dough, okay? So, I've got my baking sheet to the left of my rolling out area. I've got a, a, a piece of gripper mat that's going to stop this flexi chopping board from moving around, Okay? And then what I've got is I'm going to put my spacers either side because I'm going to roll out my cookie dough in between those spacers, okay? If you do not have spacers or don't have rulers that you can get to, the other thing you can use are two cake boards, okay? So you can lay them either side. In a minute, I'm going to get my cookie dough, roll my cookie dough out. But I can place them either side. And can you see, I can roll out my cookie dough and I've got a nine, nice nine mil gap there to roll out my cookie dough too, okay? Now, years ago at college, we would use trays like this and upturn them and then roll out with those either side, okay? 
So if you want to, you can buy a couple of spare cake boards. If you've got a handyman, he can, or handy person, I shouldn't say handyman, handy person, they can, you know, cut you some wood, you know, and, and do it that way. Okay, but I'm gonna use my acrylic spaces. Now, the best tip I can give you is when you roll out your cookie dough, you should always have another piece of paper that acts as a barrier to stop your cookie dough from sticking, okay? You might have some light bulb moments when you see what I'm about to do. So again, I'm just gonna take a piece of paper. It doesn't have to be huge, okay? And then I'm going to lay that on top when I roll so, that, so my dough doesn't stick, okay? And I'm going to unwrap this. And as I said earlier, you can freeze this if you want to, okay? Now, sometimes you might need a small sprinkling of flour and you can have a little pot of it just so you can lightly, if, if things are starting to stick, okay? Now, here in Australia, it gets very, very humid and so we rely on aircon pretty much all the time. But realistically, you mustn't put tons and tons of flour on here because what will happen is it will actually then start to dry out, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my paper on top and I'm going to roll just slightly north to south, okay? And I'm gonna turn my flexi chopping board around, okay? And again, I'm just going to roll north to south just a couple of times, okay? And what I love about my flexi chopping board is I can move it around. I don't have to keep lifting up my dough and moving it around, okay? Does anybody find that annoying when they have to do that? So I'm rolling, okay? Now I'm using my, my polycarbonate rolling pin, but if you want to, you can use a wooden one. It doesn't really matter, okay? Because it doesn't, it doesn't, touch, the, it doesn't touch the cookie dough anyway, you know? So as I roll it out, Okay, and can you see it's getting to a nice smooth thickness? So what's brilliant about having the spacers is when you roll it out, and once you've rolled it, and your cookie dough cannot grow anymore, you've reached the perfect depth, okay? So make sure when you put your spacers, they're not right next to the cookie dough, you leave a little bit of a gap, but as you roll, it shouldn't, get any bigger now it should be at the three mils depth okay so this is your first piece of cookie dough now if you found that it was really really hot in your workplace then realistically it's probably too hot to be working in it but realistically if you had a really hot ki kitchen you're working in there's nothing to stop you from lifting up this sheet and then placing it back in the fridge to become cooler but really, you should have air con that is not overly, you know, it shouldn't be overly sticky in your work area, okay? Now, with my laminated sheets, there's a couple of things that we're going to need to do. We need to make size for size. Now, when I cut out my templates, if I start to put two larger ones on here, and then I put a couple of smaller ones, and, and in theory, I can almost, I can't fit all them all, but I need to make sure I put the right size cookies on different trays, because otherwise if I cook a big one and the little one, the little one will cook quicker, okay? And then my bigger one will be undercooked, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I am just going to bake two on one tray to begin with, and then I'm gonna bake all these on the same size tray, and then the others I'm going to um, do separately, okay? Now, to cut out our template, there are different ways to cut things. The easiest is a pizza wheel. So the easiest tool I find is a pizza wheel, okay? And so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna use my pizza wheel and I'm gonna cut round my template. Okay, and then what I like to do, I like to scoop all my off cuts. And I'm just going to put a piece of paper there and I'm going to put all my off cuts on there. Okay. We won't waste them. I'm going to make some little trees. Okay. 
Now, another brilliant tool you can use is your bench cutter, your, your bench scraper. You can use that to cut as well. And another tool that I use sometimes is a ruler. So if I've got kids in the class and I don't want them cutting their fingers, I will give them a ruler to cut, you know. So once I've got my cookie dough cut, okay, I've got to move it onto my baking tray. Now there's a few different ways I can do it. I could just flip it over, but what I'd like to do, you can also use this type of scraper and you can lift it over like so. But what I like to do is to use my flexi chopper and I just run it underneath there. Let me just do this for your camera purposes and then I just lift it back onto there. Okay. And then what I want to do first of all is I want to just neaten it up. Okay, so just neaten it up. So I've got a really nice, and this is my roof panel section, okay? So I've got to repeat the same process. I've got to make two, um, two uh, roof panels and then the smaller sections. Now I don't need the dough, I don't need it back up, I just scoop it up like so. And by dividing it into four batches, it makes it manageable and also quite easy to handle. Okay, so when you make the dough, I recommend you pop it into, make it into four, fold it up into four batches. And in each batch, you'll be able to get Okay, I'm just going to lift it up once more. Okay, now if you find that these are becoming sticky, you can dust them lightly with some, with, um, some flour, some self-raising flour, okay? So again, if I wanted to, I can simply just use my bench cutter and cut that out. Okay, and then what you're going to do, you're going to scoop all your off cuts. And what's lovely about this recipe, you can actually freeze the dough unbaked. And next, we can bake all your components, and then you can put them in the freezer, and then you can use them at a later date, so you don't have to do everything. Now, if you find that this is starting to stick, my, my studio is nice and cool, but if it was starting to stick, okay, you get a little bit of flour, and you just do a small sprinkling, okay? Really stingy, small sprinkling, not tons of it. Give it a shake, and you just slide it in, okay? and then slide it out it's going to be one of those blooper things <laughs> okay and then what i want to do next is i want to just make sure that they are nice and square okay and then i'm going to refrigerate these for another 20 minutes Now I will post a picture at the end of what they look like cooked, but I'm obviously not going to cook them live on Facebook um, because I've had a few complaints in the past about the length of time it takes. But realistically, this is a great awareness because this is the length of time it takes to make things. And I don't think people realize how things do take the time. But as my mum always said, good things do take time, you know. And I think we've, I think we've forgotten the art of baking, or convenience stuff has kind of overtaken. But once you eat something like this, it's so delicious, you know. There's no preservatives. There's nothing added to this mixture, and it's just beautiful. Yeah, it is. A, it does have something added. It has our love added to it, you know. So now I'm going to roll that out. And then I'm going to get my baking tray 
over I prepared a minute ago. Okay, and then this time I've already done my, my two large roof panels. I'm going to do my two side panels. Now my side panels are a little bit smaller, obviously, and I'm just going to cut round that. Cut round that. Again, I'm going to scoop my off cuts, but I'm going to use those, okay? Because I'm not going to waste them. Okay, and then with my flowered board, I'm just going to scoop that up. I'm going to turn that round and pop that on there. Okay, now. With my, um, I've still got another ball, so I'm going to get that out of the fridge. Got to take that out. And what's lovely about this dough, it doesn't get tough. You know, like some doughs, that you, have you ever made a dough and it's like really tough? This dough is beautiful. I think it's the black treacle. It just, oh, it's just really lovely, you know. And it does dry really nice and hard, okay? It's not a soft gingerbread. It's not, you know, I mean, you want a nice firm gingerbread. But, okay? And again, it's going to roll. But can you see how the spacers help to, to get a nice even, even depth? Okay? So I need to cut one more template. Just going to check something. I feel that the dough is a little bit thicker still at the top. Yeah, and as I rolled, I could see it just grew a little bit more. Okay. All right, so this is my fourth. I'm doing two panels. Again, if I wanted to, I could use a cutter like this. And if I'm teaching kids, this is a really good tool to have. Okay, and you can get these in most um, cookware shops. And this brand, I think, is made by Loyal, or Royal even, one that they, okay? Now, I don't use that to scoop the, I find it sometimes sticks a little bit, so I honestly think a small sprinkling on a little spare flexi board is perfect, okay? Now, with the side panels, what I want to do next, Okay, I want to straighten these up. And I want to cut my windows out. Now, I don't want the windows to be too big, okay? So, th there's a couple of things you can do also. Um, if, you, if you didn't have square cutters, okay, you could use a, a round cutter and then cut that out and then square it up, okay? But I've, I'm, I'm, I've got some my square cutters and I'm, you know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna put the windows right at the bottom because I'm gonna have the snow built up. I'm gonna sort of put them smack bang in the middle, okay? So I'm gonna push down, give it a slight wiggle and by wiggling it, can you see it traps it, okay? I'm gonna use my fingers and just push that out, okay? So push it in, give it a slight wiggle and by wiggling it, it traps it in. Uh-huh. You didn't know wiggling could do that, did you? So push it in, give it a slight wiggle, and it traps it. Oh, delicious cookies, okay? But I'm going to use them. I'm going to use them to make a, a, the chimney, okay? And then what I want to do, I want to chill this before I put me, um, me bling bling in, me edible sweets, and then I'm going to bake it. But I'll show you how in a minute. Okay, so the last bit I've got to do now are the panels for the actual roof. Now, what I could have done is put those two on, on the other two, but I've got lots of trays, so I'm going to do two more, and I'm going to show you how to do the trees. So now I am down to my cookie scraps, okay, because I've, I've already rolled out uh, five pieces, and so I'm going to get my cookie dough. And this is good enough to eat. 
but I'll, I'll restrain myself. Okay. Again, with the baking paper that you're using to roll out, always still put it down the, the sticky side down. Don't start reversing it, otherwise it will make your rolling pin sticky, okay? So don't turn the paper upside down. Keep it in the same, you know. So as I roll north to south, remove your spacers and then you can rotate your, your, um, your flexi chopping board, okay? Now I'm going to bake on 160, and which is I think 320 Fahrenheit, but all of that will be in the information that I put up after this. Um, but we want to pre-warm the oven, so the oven has to be warm um, before we obviously put the cookies in. So again I'm just going to cut round but as I said, this is a great tool to use. And if you want to, you can also use a pizza wheel. And again, obviously you can use a knife, okay? Now, if I want to use this, I'm just gonna put a small sprinkling of flour on, okay? And then tap it off, you don't need lots, okay? And then literally just scoop it on and then place it in position. I normally layer it in the middle rather than on the ends, okay? So I have a more of an even, even bake, okay? And then with the mixture, okay? So if you want to really make a larger gingerbread house than, than what, I, what I'm suggesting, you can, you can increase it by about two inches all the way around. There is enough cookie dough in this recipe to do that, okay? But if you realistically, this is a lot. This is quite a bit of um, cookie dough, and by the time I make the Christmas trees, it's quite there's quite a bit of cookies there to eat. You know, um, how do I know? Because I've eaten so many of them. <laughs> so now I'm just going to roll that out. Beautiful. Okay. Template down. Gonna cut. Can you see how great this tool is to use? Okay. So they call them a bench scraper. Uh, years ago, we would use them to clean down our benches. Um, we call them pastry cutters as well because you can cut through your pastry well. And I think they're an awesome tool. They're brilliant for cutting big pieces of fondant as well. You, you know, here in Australia, we buy big tubs of fondant and. Um, Now, I'm going to reshape my shapes, okay? And realistically, that's a little bit too close, it's touching it, okay? So I'm gonna shape that up. Now, if you wanted to, you could cut um, a window out these ends as well. One of them's gonna be a door, and what I don't do is I don't cut the door out, okay? I actually put the door on top. So I've got more structure in it. But if you wanted to, you could cut out a few little bit, you know, a few more windows, okay? But I'm going to chill this. Okay, so have we any questions? Any questions, anyone? So you're going to have a try and make this beautiful gingerbread house. Wow, we got 156 live viewers. That could be my husband and son on six different applications, but um, I don't think so. So cookie cookie dough is just beautiful. And as, as I said earlier, we can, we can make the cookie dough, rest it for 20 minutes, and then we can freeze it, okay? Because I think in our busy lives, sometimes it's really hard to dedicate, you know, like five hours to make something. And realistically, it probably does take five hours. So realistically, if you can make the cookie dough and then freeze it, 
And then you can take the cookie dough out again and then you can make the cookies and then you can freeze them. You can do it all in stages, you know. Um, I have quite a few uh, teachers that come in and learn because they want to sort of put this training into the schools, but they're time restraints, you know, and I said, well, you can do it. However, you've just got to plan it, you know. Um, and as my mum always said, you know, Rome was not built in a day, and nor are cakes or cookies, okay. So now what I want to do is I want to make some Christmas trees. Hold it over the baking paper, then you don't have to lift it over. Okay. Anyway, I'm not reading anybody's messages today. I'm just going to go with my flow. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to shape up my cookie dough. And I'm going to roll out some Christmas trees. Now, I can, if I'm doing a smaller piece, I can actually roll out with a smaller rolling pin. But I'm just going to rotate it. Make sure your knife is not in, the, in your area of work. Okay. And I actually prefer my, my large plastic rolling pin. Okay. Now for my cookies, if I wanted to, I could take one of my um, spacers away and bring it down to two mils. Um, when I roll out my fondant, I actually roll it out to one mil, so I use one spacer. But I actually want these cookies to be of substantial. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get my cookie cutter. I've got a little bit of flour in here, so I'm gonna just do a light tap in my flour. I'm going to lay it on top and then I'm going to cut down and I'm going to use my bench scraper just to scoop a little bit of that mixture away. Can you all, you can all see, yeah. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to scoop that underneath and I'm going to lift it up. Okay, and then I'm going to lay it on my tray. Just going to bring the camera back out a bit, yeah. So I'm going to lay it on my tray and then I'm going to just gently lift it up, okay? So I'm gonna push that down, cut out my second one, scoop that, and then lay that down, okay? Now sometimes I might have a, a little point in my cookie that's a little bit tricky in getting out. And what I tend to do is I tend to use the end of a paintbrush just to push that out, okay? I don't necessarily want to dent the, the cookie too much but if it's going to be covered in fondant then you know that's 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 not a problem okay so what I want to do I want to make at least six Christmas trees for this and I've actually made another batch of cookie dough which is hiding in the fridge because my son is a preppy teacher and I think he wants to give him something Sweet and memorable. So he's having my cookies, so you know. Oh. Right, so I'm just going to scoop that away, okay? Scoop that bit away and I lift it up, and can you see the cookie stays intact, okay? Now you might go, well, yeah, but you've got to, you only can cut out a few at a time. That is true. But what is great, they all retain their shape. Their shape is not disturbed, okay? And that is how I do all my cookies. And if you go on my website, you'll see um, my cookie gallery, and you'll see that all my cookies are, you know, the shape is lovely, and they don't spread, because I'm gonna chill them next, and what's brilliant is that they keep their shape. So I don't know if, if you are aware of doing that, or you, that's how you make the cookies anyway, but um, for me, it's just a really good way, okay? Now, Earlier, I spoke about adding nuts and stuff. You could make a pecan and gingerbread cookie, you know. You don't have to necessarily um, make a gingerbread house with this. And what I like to do is I like to get some nice pecans. I try and make them, have them as shell-free, but they've got shells on them. The, sorry, the skins on them even. What I tend to do is I tend to put them on a baking tray and warm them in the oven. And then I take them out. I put them in a tea towel, I give them a rub, and all the, the skins just rub off. Um, so if you buy any nuts that have got the, the skins on, you can easily, you know, remove them, okay? So I'm just gonna cut another one out. But you can make a really nice um, ginger and pecan cookie, you know? 
Okay, so now I've got not six nice uh, Christmas trees. I'm going to pop them in the fridge and I'm going to chill them. And I've still got a little bit of cookie dough left, okay? Now, what's really nice is um, my gingerbread house is going to have some decorations. But what's really nice, you can, if you want to, you know, make some stars and decorate stars. And these are really lovely to give, give us just a little, you know, gift to your friends or your neighbours. If my neighbours are watching this, they're going to be expecting this now. But... My treat to them normally is banoffee pie. Every New Year we normally have a gathering and banoffee pie is our go-to dessert. So. so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to roll out and I'm going to cut some largish stars. Okay, So I'm just going to push my cutters in. I'm going to flick the star mixture away. And I'm just going to use a technical finger to push the star out. Okay. And you can, if you want to, you can actually use another star and then cut it out. And then you can um, make them as hanging on decorations on the Christmas tree, you know. Um, a lot of my influence, I think, is uh, uh, salt dough. Uh, when I emigrated here, I actually bought quite a few salt dough pieces that I've made. Because I actually do like modelling. Uh, my husband jokes, it can't be catwalk modelling. But I do like modelling. You know, I like shaping things and stuff. And for me, my salt dough, um, as a kid, it was plasticine. And then when I was about 13, 14, I discovered salt dough. Um, it's a really old fashioned style of craft and um, really lovely product, you know? And you can, you can color it your salt dough. You can airbrush it, you can spray it. And it's a bit like faux, faux part stuff. It's really lovely and, um, you know, you can Google it or go to your local library and, and, and grab a book. But um, salt dough is a really easy medium. Um, now, with these beautiful uh, gingerbread stars, they all need to be refrigerated for at least 20 minutes. Because what that will do then, it will stop it from spreading. Okay, It will it will keep the shape and it will stop it from spreading. Now, if you've got little kids and you don't have any cutters, okay... The easiest thing to do is just get them to, you can get the dough and you can just roll it into a sausage, okay? Just into a nice sausage, okay? And they don't have to use a sharp knife. They can use a bench cutter or they can use a plastic knife. Because I'm over 18 just, I'm going to use a knife and I'm just going to slice this down, okay? And then what I'm going to do is just place them onto my tray. These are known as Scooby Snacks in my family's repertoire, okay? And then all I do is just use my fingers to pat them down. You can use a fork if you want to to make a pattern, okay? And then I'm just going to chill those. I want to make them a little bit flatter so they are beautiful, okay? So I'm going to chill those. Okay, so now, I was going to say crushed candy, but it is crushed candy. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put my crushed candy inside my windows, okay? And you might ask, well, you know, why, why have I chilled it and not put the, the candy in first? I find it just defines the shape of the windows better, okay? So this is just the crushed humbugs. So these were the humbugs that I use, okay. I also chose some hard boiled candies, but I left them in the bag and then it rained and they've all gone soft, okay. So I'm not gonna use those. And then what you can do, you can get a spoon and you can simply just sprinkle them in there. Okay, and they will melt 
like glass. Now the downside of those, as opposed to these, these go translucent and more clearer. This, these will melt like a solid pink and white swirl, okay? And you, you want to sort of have the finer crumbs, okay? You don't want them too lumpy, okay? And then make sure they are spread evenly in here, okay? Now, if you wanted to, you could do just, you know, cookies on sticks. You could um, make some circle cookies or some stars, cut out the circles, and then fill them with the hard candies, okay? Um, and those look really, really lovely, okay? Now, what I don't do is I don't fill it right the way up to the top, okay? But I don't really want bare patches. It will all melt and it will all blend, okay? So that is how I do the gingerbread men. Now, I'm going to gingerbread men, gingerbread house. I'm now going to bake these, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bake them in the oven, and I'm going to put a Facebook uh, page. I'm going to do another Facebook Live in about an hour's time at least. But for some of you, you're overseas. Some of you are live, but it will be live, and you'll see what the finished product is. Now, when I bake these, they're going to go in the oven and they're going to go in at 160, okay? And they are going to take between 20 to 25 minutes to bake, okay? Now, the downside of baking cookies that are brown, sometimes we, we take them out when they're slightly under. They will colour. They will actually change colour. They will start to go a darker shade of brown. We don't want to take them out when they're black, okay? We want to get them out when they're, when they're brown. They will rise slightly, okay? Um, they will go slightly puffy and then they'll they will drop down and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I take them out the, out the oven and how I put them on a cooling rack and then what I do is I allow them to completely cool on their baking sheets on a cooling rack okay and then once that's done once they're totally cool you can then wrap them in paper you can wrap them in glad wrap and then you can freeze them I recommend you put them in a freezer proof container so that you protect them and then you can take them out a couple of days before Christmas and put them together, okay? You may not want to do that. You might want to make the gingerbread house all, all on the one day. That's fine, but it's going to take a few hours out of your time. So by doing this in stages, um, you will find that it's, it's going to be more manageable. Now, I'm going to allow just a couple of minutes of questions and answers. Good night from Melbourne. Oh, I'm cooking my suet puddings tomorrow. Yes, suet puddings. Back in England, I used to make um, a Sussex Pond swamp pudding, which was suet pastry, um, a lemon, brown sugar, and um, butter. Sounds really weird, but it's the most delicious. And it's a, we call it a Sussex Pond pudding because it looks like a pond when you open it, a bit murky. But I love suet pastry, um, so does my husband. So if you've got any questions now, just type them in, and I'll allow, I'll let, I'll allow a few minutes for them to come up and then I will be answering them. Now, I'm going to pop my oven on, on 160. I'm going to pre-warm it, and I'm going to put each sheet in, in the oven. I'm only going to have one sheet on midway and then the second sheet lower. I'm not going to have them really close to each other. I want nice airflow, okay? Realistically, when we put our trays in, we should always have about an inch gap either side. A really big tip I want to share to you is using mm -hmm. a oven thermometer. Now, oven thermometers, you can get them pretty much anywhere. You buy them in most cookware shops and you buy them in supermarkets in the, in the food section, okay? Now, with an oven thermometer, you put your oven on, whack it up to 160 or 320, whatever temperature you're working on, put it in and then wait for the light to go off. If you find that when you're baking on 160 and it's reading 180, you know that your oven's 20 degrees out. So realistically, you need to bring your oven down to 140, and then it's baking on 160. Now, when we bake, you know, to do a roast chicken, you know, basically, if we have a poor oven, it's going to take like three hours to cook, you know. But when we have, um, you know, when, we, when we're cooking cakes, you know, cookies, cupcakes, we need precision when we bake. So that's why it's really important that our oven temperatures is the right temperature. We can't guess it. We can't guess it, mate. We've got to get it right. So I recommend buying an oven thermometer. The other thing is, if your oven is under warranty and you find it's running too fast or too quick, get them to come out and calibrate it if it's under warranty and they'll check the settings. Now there's a few questions coming up. Um, 
could you put the recipe up for the ginger biscuits, please? Yes. Um, why do you cut out the bits of dough that you only cut out one piece from each? Why do you cut out such small bits of dough that you only cut for one piece from each? Um, because that's how I roll. That's how I do it. I just do it in smaller sections rather than having dough everywhere. And I actually just pull out a piece of the dough out of the fridge at a time. That's just how I, that's, that's how I roll my dough. <laughs> so that's how I work. Um, I always have it all wrapped up in small pieces so it's not drying out. That's just, you know, you want to make a massive batch and then chill a whole batch, that's fine. But it's going to take ages to chill and I just do it in small sections. So, you know, each to their own. If I worked in a wholesale bakery, I'd probably be doing it in massive groups and then, you know. But as I'm small size, in my scale of what I do, I do it in small sections. So make sure your oven is working at the right temperature. We don't want it too hot, we don't want it too cold. And we also want to bake it nice and evenly. Now, regards to fan forcing and stuff, all electric ovens nowadays have a fan. They rotate it at the back. And what I don't do is, with my ovens, they're really basic ovens. They, they've only got an overhead grill, which I never use. It's a fan at the back and there's no heat rays, you know, bars at the bottom it's just an even flow from the back and what I don't do is I don't um, choose for a uh, false fan I don't have a false fan selection anyway so it just heats evenly and distributes it the other thing is I'm going to do a tutorial for a fruit cake um, but the other tip that I want to share with you is when I'm baking especially mud cakes and they're in the oven for three, four hours fruit cake. I put a ramekin, an oven proof dish of cold water uh, alongside in the oven at the same time. And what it does, it creates a nice moist vapor. And what it does, it makes the cake not so dried out, okay? Um, and so it's almost a bit of a steam effect, I suppose. Um, but I, if I'm baking cakes and they're in the oven for more than two hours, I generally will put a ramekin of water. It doesn't matter if the ramekin um, uh, evaporates, as long as it's an oven proof dish, it shouldn't shatter, okay? But don't use a plastic one. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I will come back and do a live Facebook feed in about an hour's time. So that's gonna be a bit late. Me, I'm a night owl anyway. Um, I had comments the other day saying, why is this lady doing demos at one in the morning? It's not one at the morning, it's half six, quarter to seven. Anyway, we've been going for a good hour or so. So I hope you've found some value in this uh, tutorial. Um, I will put the recipe up and you can see what the recipe is, but if you want a step-by-step -step guide of how to make your gingerbread house and then also the laminate guides, I've, I'm going to put a link on and you can download it from my website. It's $5 via PayPal and it's an Australian $5. So uh, if, that, if, if that would be of some benefit to you, then down, download it. Um, so I appreciate you watching and I hope it's been of some great interest. Um, if there's any um, spammy stuff, I'm going to just remove it. And um, uh, thank you for sharing. Can you please put the recipe up on the biscuits? I will, Victoria. I can do that. So thank you, everyone. And um, I hope it, you've enjoyed it. And I will do another live Facebook feed tonight and show you the finished goodies and what they look like. So um, join me then. or I'll put it up there anyway. So if you're off to work, you know, you can come back and watch it later. You're welcome. Thank you for sharing. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Rosanna. Thank you, everyone. Bye.